Okay guys, welcome. Um, originally with this video, I was just going to film it and um, and just put subtitles in and stuff like that, but I thought I'd just put some um, voice overlay in here to explain better so what's going on and, and a few more things about it because everyone always asks about it and and um, interested in a bit more of the specifics rather than just looking at a screen. So um, this will be a build of my Hubble Optics 24 inch f3.3 which you can see here um, me dragging it around and while it is very very lightweight and structurally stiff it still um, weighs about 80 kilos all up which is 2.275 pounds or something like that for our American friends. Um, that top upper housing is probably about five to seven kilos or getting close to 20 pounds with all the stuff on it. Um, over in the background there you saw me um, removing the shroud and all weather cover and um, what do you call them, fridge trolleys just to uh, still move the box around separately with the mirror in it which you can see there to the right. What I'm doing here is I'm just leveling out the structure. I've got a mark on the side that I usually leave it in the same position when I pack it up and when I set it up outside so that basically my setup is minimal. I just point it to true north and zero degrees and away I go because the, the um, encoders there you go the encoders um, are always sat in the same position so and at the front there I'm just churning the little feet around that the mirror sits on when it um, when it is in the lower altitude positions it's got some solid feet there at the bottom and up the top you um, it's got some other holders which you'll get a look at and in a second I can put an overlay up and also show you the, um, the collimation um, bolts that you turn. So here's the mirror here. It's a famous sandwich design. Um, 609 millimetres, so almost 61 centimetres in diameter with a full face of 600 millimetres of glass. So the beveled edges are outside of that 600 millimetres or 24 inches. Um, gives you good little finger grasps there. The mirror is not light. Um, I think the mirror is close to 30, degree, uh, 30 kilograms. And again, what's that? 2.70 pounds. Um, sometimes it's a, the tolerances are quite tight here. And you can get your finger jammed or stuck. But you just cop it. You don't drop the mirror. It's the last thing. Rather lose a finger than drop the mirror. So I'm just turning that um, that seat around. I've slightly twisted it. This is actually the first time in the, in all the times I've set it up outside. I've never actually done that before. But just goes to show you that um, I just want to show you everything as it goes. There's there's no um, different takes and all that type of stuff. It's just as it falls. So. I'll move that back to that set point. I've got a mark on the, the front uh, altitude bearing of where it sits on the um, front shaft and I tighten the clutch back up. Put um, the mirror cover on here and then we'll start looking at the um, putting the trusses on. only go one way, you see up the top there, the knobs face outwards. And also I normally, um, when I build it outside, I will um, put the base down without the rocker box on it. And when I do that, I'll also install the power source or the power lead. So you'll see here um, in a little while, I get stuck because I've left, I put the mirror and everything on there first and the way I've taped in the, um, um, done all the cable management, 
uh, which is very neat and tidy in there for the big scope is it's very hard to put the um, uh, the power source in so anyway this is the altitude encoders encoder and so the short section screws into the rocker box and then a long section just slots into a, um, a slot which is on the um, the bottom board and it's pretty quick as you can see only a couple of minutes into it five minutes into it something like that maybe four it's pretty quick to set up I'm not rushing or anything like that um, you can also see the 16 inch Hubble optics dob which I've done a lot of my good work with on that love that scope and there's a 10 inch GSO clone beside it so you can see the size differences there as I start to get this put together on the left hand side sitting on the table which will be a focus of um, one of my other videos is the Blue Eddy AC70 which is a 768 watt hour power source and um, as I said before in um, the video I uploaded the other day it's, it's really really good it, um, basically when the scope tracks it works out to be next to nothing I mean it's it's almost 200 hours worth of usage just if the scope's traffic track tracking in the night sky you probably some of the uh, more astute have probably seen I've got some marks on the um, the carbon fiber trusses and you can actually look and see on the 16 inch Hubble optics dob as well there's it's just um, electrical tape but it's one is for the um, the focus aside two is always the front three is always the other side and four at the back so it just means that when I put the scope together it's always in the same orientation and um, there's always a minimal collimation to do because of this so as you can see there's a little bit of technique to it but I've been doing this for a while now and it's definitely not that hard when you're um, into your routine um, and it all comes together quite quickly normally if I was to um, be building it for a night out I would um, put the the shroud on as well and I will put the shroud on before the upper housing goes on because it just saves time mucking around with the um, the finder scope and the telrad on there but it is still not too bad you've just got to loop it over the top there and um, um, get it on that way no shoes seen on tippy toes it is up there normally I'll do roll it over a bit too but um, it's sitting up nice and straight at the moment um, got lots of good um, ideas to do I actually um, the camera I spoke about in the last video is just showing up and it's sitting at my feet um, I've just got to pick up some spaces for it for the um, um, the coma corrector to camera to ensure the 55 mil back focus um, so some some of that stuff will be coming soon so I've got the Nexus coma corrector I've also got a BARDA Mark III coma corrector and um, I might do a video if someone wants to see that just with the Nexus versus the, the Mark III coma corrector the BARDA and no coma corrector uh, that'll be pretty ugly no coma corrector on this scope but um, it's uh, at f3.3 it's going to have a fair bit of movement out wide so here you can see me now this is what I was talking about with the mirror box it's normally not on there and you just reach in and you just plug it in but with the mirror and everything sitting there you can't just reach over the top and then just push in there so I might even fast forward this bit um, so uh, other people asking do you use it visually yeah I do uh, normally I'll have a look at targets before I actually start imaging 
Um, so I always enjoy throwing in, I usually use the um, 18 mil Explore Scientific, the 82 degree eyepiece. That's a bit of a weapon, except if you're looking at the moon, it's way too bright to look at the moon with this thing. I think the 16's at the upper upper limit, especially if you're going full moon, something like that. You've really got to dim it down with using the um, the smaller eyepieces. Like the, I've got a 6.7 uh, Explore Scientific eyepiece, which I usually use because it knocks a bit of the light out of it. Um, there is a collimation um, video coming soon as well and also uh, Luke mentioned in the comments he wanted to see a planetary imaging comparison so I think that's a pretty good idea um, I will use the 16 the 10 and the 6 inch Virtuoso and I'll put them all on the equatorial platform and what we'll do is we'll target a fixed F ratio In between like 15 and 20 f15 f20 depending on the um the barlows i've got to do that so the virtuoso because it's only got a one inch focuser i will use a 3.5 x cbit optics barlow which i've had for a few years but it will not get um a an adc but at that image scale, which is only going to be 2,000 millimetres or something like that, it's not really going to matter too much. You're not going to see um, the, the red and blue fringing that badly. It's only when you get up into the, the uh, higher focal lengths that the fringing will start to get away from us because of the, um, it might be 5 or 6 pixels on either side of separation. So I'll have that on the... On the 10 inch dob, I'll use my trusted um, Celestron 2.5x Barlow and ADC. And because of the distance the camera will be from the top of the Barlow, it'll actually be, or with the ADC spacer, it'll actually be about 3.7 or something along those lines. So that'll be F18. And with my 16 inch dob, I'll use the Seabit Optics Barlow. I've got, and that works out because it's f4.5, it works out to be pretty close to f19 or f20 or something along those lines. So they're pretty close to um, a fair comparison there. Um, with the Virtuoso probably being around f18, the 10 inch being around f19, and the 16 at about f20. So um, yeah, the very similar levels of gain and shutter speed will be able to be used. But unfortunately, you, you cannot, from 10 minutes here or there, you might get good seeing on one and, and um, average seeing on the others. But um, we'll just wait and see if it's consistent. I think you'll get a pretty accurate re response and and uh, representation of, of what each scope can give. Um, I'm looking to do that in the next couple of nights, so let's see how that goes. You'll see now that I've finally got that in and knocked a bit of skin off my knuckle as well, which is always good fun. But it's in, I'll flick it on now. And what are we, by the looks of that, we're about 10 minutes in. So now all I do is open up my tablet and get onto the OnStep app and then I just wait for the controller on the scope to boot up. So I've just opened it up and I usually just sit down and I usually pack up my mess after that which I'll do here. And wait for it to kick away. So as always guys, um, be sure to send any or make any comments and um, if you've got any ideas of what you want to see like these, I'm always getting comments from old videos and stuff like that and if there's any ideas or for videos that you want to see, imaging sessions too was uh, one that's mentioned just to set up and just um, sit out there and talk through an imaging session. 
Um, that's something I can do. I was asked the other day on Reddit, do I do live broadcasts? Um, also something I can do, just not at the moment. I just want to check and see what kind of um, resolution. We don't want to be looking and see mud, you know, and, and bricked and all that. So I'll get rid of the top cover. So you can have a look at the mirror. With the reflections on there. Um, basically I've never cleaned the mirror yet. And you don't need to. That's not something that needs to be done a lot. You can see there it's got a couple of little marks on it. And of sitting in the boxes. Or if I've, when I've left it outside for... But there's no... Um, nothing on the mirror that would be problematic to the, the coatings or anything like that. I have removed a couple of little marks off there which was, which would have been problematic but um, I don't let them sit on there but all the rest of the stuff is it's like the, the dust and, and hairs and bits and pieces and stuff is just like um, yeah I'm not worried about that. The less you touch, the less you touch your mirror the better so anyway guys that's about it it's obviously alive it's probably in the tune of building it's probably 10 minutes and um, that's about it wish everyone the best enjoy your day or night or whatever you're doing and um, I'll speak to you again soon bye for now